Yes. Okay, we are live. Thank you all uh, for joining us. If you're logging in through Zoom or if you're joining us on Facebook Live, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Clementine Bordeaux. I'm here on behalf of Racing Magpie, and I just want to welcome everyone to this exciting presentation by Rosetta Walker about grant writing. And if you, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Racing Magpie, we're a Lakota-centric arts and culture organization founded here in Minneluzaha Otuahe, which is Rapid City, South Dakota. And our goal is to center the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. And our work is really about uplifting and elevating uh, the the creative practices of Ocheti Shakoi artists and culture bearers within the region and in our community. And as a part of being a good relative, we've reimagined the Lakota winter camp model and thinking through problem solving and community building and addressing the ways that Ocheti Shakoi people uh, interact with the world around us. So uh, these events are public, open, and uh, we, of course, are live on Facebook, and we'll also share this video out once um, the presentation is done so people can access it later. So if you end up joining us a little bit later, um, then you, you will be able to find this video through Racing Magpie. And so with that, I will turn uh, this over to Rosetta, who's going to talk with us about grant writing and then also just share some of her experiences and I will let her more formally introduce herself. So welcome, Rosetta. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clementine and uh, Peter. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your space and share some information. Uh, my name is Rosetta Badhand Walker. I'm Sakangu Lakota from the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. I live in Tempe, Arizona. And my father was from the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. And my mother was from Stanley Rock. I did have the pleasure and opportunity to meet everybody at Racing Magpie uh, last summer, May of 2023, when I participated in the Wachoon play and we had our performance at Racing Magpie. And so that opened the door of opportunity to Clementine and the staff there and their um, area that just hosts a plethora of wonderful events and support of the community is really overwhelming. I've watched your your community grow there under your uh, leadership and I, I thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, like I said, I'm Rosetta Walker and today I will briefly discuss and it's just a glossing over of grant writing. A lot of people uh, want to know how to do grant writing or our grant writers or our grant peer review people. And I've done all three. So for a little history and background of grant writing is back in the early 80s and um, probably into the 90s, I worked for a corporate office. I worked for a corporation that was nationwide and I was a panel reviewer for grants. And that's where I got my feet wet on what grants, what a grant was, what a grant review peer person was, and how the corporation reached out and would help the community. So being a grant reviewer, we had organizations, nonprofits that would solicit the corporation for grant funding based on their philanthropy. You know, it, it would change periodically from year to year. And when I say on their philanthropy, uh, one year we could focus on sports. One year we'd fo focus on women in business. We would focus on the homeless community or we would do outreach for veterans. So we would have, we being the corporation, would provide funding to nonprofits for people, these groups to come together, get monies so that they could turn around and support their community in whatever umbrella we were uh, going with that year. So for example, on, on homelessness, 
one year we um, funded ha Habitat for Humanity. So the that would be somebody from Habitat for Humanity would submit a grant to the corporation. We would turn around, approve the grant, and then give them X amount of dollars. And with that also comes the manpower. So we, you know, being a bank of 5,000 employees, we would also help Habitat for Humanity in building their homes, cleaning the yards, installing AC units, and whatever needed, whatever the needs of Habitat for Humanity were at that time. So that's what grant funding is. So you are being able to connect with the pot of money. You're being able to connect with organizations, groups, corporations that have a philanthropy to help their community. And what I did learn during this time, I did grant review for about 10 years with that corporation, is that um, everybody, all these large corporations all have built into their business model philanthropy to give back to their community. And when I say that is that you're talking Southwest Airlines, Phoenix Suns, Wells Fargo Bank, you know, any of the large corporations all have money to give to their community. And all these corporations have their own model of grant funding. So that's where you start. If you're, you know, a nonprofit and you say, hey, you know, I we need money. We need to get this, you know, 10K or this marathon going so that we can raise funds for our, you know, homeless encampments and stuff. That's where you start. So that's where I learned how to tap into the corporations that have the pots of money to filter down to the nonprofits who need it to give back to their communities. So if, if that makes uh, sense to everybody, then we'll we'll go on. If anybody has any questions or, or anything, you know, let me know, drop it in the chat. I know they have monitors in the chat and, you know, thank you for tuning in today. What um, the next step is, that was where I started the grant review the grant review process. Then the next step where people get their feet wet is they learn how to write a grant. So writing a grant itself is very, very um, inclusive because you're talking to an organization that is willing to give you $10,000, you know, $100,000 up to a million dollars, whoever and what your project might be. So you have to know what you're asking for. And also along that same lines to the organization, you need to let them know what you're doing with that money because you could very well have this beautiful written outline of your objectives and what you're going to do with the funding and why you need the money. But if you don't have follow-up and if you don't give the feedback to the organization of what you did with the money, then you may not get funded again. Or if you come back to them, you know, they can say, well, you never did your follow-up survey. You never, you know, told us how your project came out. So therefore you're now kind of, you know, going to be in the back of the line. You're not going to be a, a repeat funder here. So that's one thing that, um, one of my uh, nonprofits that I helped write a grant for, we didn't. We didn't fill out our end of year report to them. And when we requested funding for the following year for our Indian market, they said, uh, excuse me, by the way, <laughs> you know, you, you didn't uh, fill out our paperwork. So you're going to be in back the line again. And Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get funding from that specific organization for probably like the last three years. So um, lessons learned, word to the wise, always follow through, follow up and do, do your due diligence there. Um, when doing grant writing, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of work because you have to really voice 
put down words on paper what it is you, you want to do. Uh, for example, um, a, a ballet theater wants to provide free ballet classes to an underserved community. And they're saying we can serve 20 students and these students would be between the age of six and 16. We're gonna offer free ballet classes from classically trained ballet teachers. So that's where you start to say, what do you wanna do? Well, we want to offer free ballet classes. Okay, well, how are you gonna do it? Well, this is what we're gonna do. This is, this is our model. We're going to do the advertising. We're gonna do it the YMCA. This is where we're going to need the funding to pay our teachers. We have to rent the space. We have to provide snacks for the kids, you know, water, juice, whatever. So that's kind of where you start. You look at what it is you want to do, what the end result will be, and how long your project will be. So you could request funding for five years. You could request funding for one fiscal year. It depends on your project. It depends on what it is you want to do and how you want to benefit the community. And for the most part, the, all the grants that I've ever worked on have benefited the community. And when I say benefited the community, what monies come into your organization go out to the community? You know, yes, you're going to keep some for your administrative costs and your leadership costs and to keep the program running. But for the most part, that funding goes back out to the community. And that's really the focus of all the grants that I've ever done. Um, it, it's, it's a wide, wide variety, a big field, a big field. Um, so if anybody wants to learn how to write grants, there are free programs online that you can do, but I was um, honored and privileged to get a scholarship to go through Native Action Network based out of uh, Washington. Is it Washington Clementine? Is I believe. Yeah. And uh, Native Action Network, If for those of you that may not be familiar with that organization, they uh, do a lot of funding. They do a lot of outreach in the Native communities, mostly, you know, in, in the West Coast, but they're nationwide as well. And they offer this grant writing class. It was a little over $2,000 to take a two-day class. So they had scholarships available and I applied for a scholarship and I got it. So I did my due diligence, signed in to the Zoom classes because this was back in, I think like 2019. Everything was via Zoom back then. And we sat, there was probably 25 of us that were in this Zoom room and we got detailed instructions on how to do grant writing from the very best instructors that they could offer. So that um, class was extremely, extremely helpful. They gave you all the tools, they gave you worksheets, they gave you all the keywords to use if you're, you know, grant, if you're grant writing to help out. And I did get certified. So you can do grant writing and get certified for that. When you do get certified, then that really opens the door of opportunity for other organizations to tap into your network to utilize you. When, when I say utilize me is I got tapped in after I got my certification to be a grant reviewer for the National Endowments for the Arts. Now that was a really um, a big coup de grace for me. It was like, wow, a national organization wants me to be a part of them. And it's like, great, I loved it. The uh, NEA uh, would distribute funds. And this was a national organization that would ask people from all 50 states to participate. So I would, there were two people from Arizona, me being one to do the NEA grant review. So I was uh, being able to access their portal to literally thousands of grants that were being submitted to the NEA for funding. 
So it was a big eye opener. It was heavy duty tasks that I signed up for that I, I took on the task. But I tell you, it was so enlightful. It really, really was extremely helpful being certified and then being taking that training and then being able to utilize it in, in a professional manner. So what I did with uh, NEA is we were looking at grants, reviewing grants for things like the Lincoln Center, like the different uh, artists that were being funded through the Ford Foundation. So these are very well-known, well-funded, large, large grants. So these are the ones that are a million dollar grants. So it was very intensive. Um, one grant, it was all through a portal. Everything was online. One grant could literally be about 1800 pages because when you're talking details, we're talking, we need your board of directors. We need five years of fiscal responsibility. We need your mission statement. We need all that outline of how you're going to take the funding, what you're going to do with the funding and, and what's going to be your end result. And that's really the basis of grants. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? What's going to be your outcome? And then when you're talking very large grants, like the million dollar grants, like the Mellon Foundation, um, they're very, very specific. They, they want all those I's dotted and those T's crossed. And this is where those large funding people, they actually pay grant writers, which is the category I fall into as being a grant writer. So I'm a peer grant review person first. I've got the certification and I got all the background from it, from the 10 years of working with corporation. And then now it has fed into being a, a paid grant writer. So that's where you can take this. You know, it, it was all just kind of fell in my lap. It was just my own personal journey that I have done within the last 25 years. It's really about 25 years that I, I've done this um, over the course of working with nonprofits, working with for-profit organizations, and also working with um, my community. You know, I I'm a volunteer in my community and I do a lot of organizing and I help out how I can. So in a nutshell, that's kind of like what I've been doing here. Um, now, I do know that people want to say, it's like, I want to be a grant writer. It's like, great, good, you know, but um, be ready to put in the time, be ready to, to, to put in the time. Um, Grant writing, I would suggest, is getting certified and getting a certification is there's organizations out there that do offer free grant writing classes and a quick Google search and you'll be able to pull up at least three or four organizations that do it for free. And, and it's just your time. You have to put the time into it. You have to put the organization into it and see if it's going to fit your model, you know, you have your own set of rules and integrities on what it is that you're doing in today's society. And is grant writing really something you want to do? Or is it just a one and done? A lot of people say, well, I, you know, my organization, we're, we're trying to do this, but we need money. We need grants. It's like, okay, well, here's some tools. This is what you can do. And this is what you can't do. And what I really find a lot of my um, fledgling nonprofits, well, they're not even nonprofits. We have a lot of uh, boots on the ground organizers that really are doing good work in the community, but yet they don't have that organization behind them. They don't have that LLC behind them. They don't have the nonprofit status behind them. And there are organizations out there that'll still fund you. But for if you're kind of shooting for the big bucks, you know, you're going to need that board of directors. You're going to need that five years of good standing in your community and financial records. You're going to need some, you know, footing on the ground here to help you out. But for those people that are trying to do that 5K walk to raise funds to buy T-shirts for the basketball team, that's doable, too. 
It really is. You know, there are organizations that will help you. And it usually comes from the community. I, for an example, we, we did. We needed T-shirts for the girls team. So we hosted a 5K. And you know who funded us? The barbershops and the car washes. You know, it, it's the people that support your community. It's your dentist. It's going and asking your eye doctor. You know, we're doing this. It's for the kids. It's for the high schoolers. Can you help us out? So those really aren't grants, but those are like gifts. But if you're looking at going further than that, you know, because like from your booster club, from your high school track team, then that's down the road of grant writing, grant funding. And what I really, really impose upon people is all these large corporations have pots of money that are free to give, but you have to put in the paperwork. You have to put the time and thought and effort into your request. And I look at all the large corporations and people said, well, where do I go? Where do I start? You know, I don't know where to begin. And it's, I tell them, it's like, well, what was the last like corporate dinner you went to, you know, did you go to the, you know, Desert Botanical Gardens to their, you know, gala fundraiser? And it's like, well, yes, I did. And it's like, did you grab a program? And they said, yeah, you know, I have it right here. And it's like, look in that program, who's funding them? Th those are the people that you can solicit for grants. So I save all the programs from different events that I go to and I look at it and it's like, oh, APS, SRP, Wells Fargo Bank, you know, all these large corporations funded that event. And that's where you can start. And they say, well, what do you mean where I can start? And say, like, if you go to their websites, if you go to Wells Fargo Bank, go to SRP, go to any of these utility corporation sites and kind of you do have to dig through their website, but you can find a link to request money, request funding. They all have it. It's all there. And um, all the insurance companies, you know, Geico, State Farm Insurance, all of them all have money that is available for the giving if you get the proper paperwork in. So that, does that kind of make sense to to people to understand? Okay, thank you. Are, are there any questions in the, the chat? Are we doing okay? Yeah, we're doing okay. Um, I know we have some folks here in the Zoom room, but if anyone has questions on Facebook, please just drop them in the comment section and I can relay those to Rosetta. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, where else do we want to go from here? Um, do we have any questions? Do that uh, people really have a burning desire on, on where to start or how to start or just kind of leaving it open, leaving it, you know, throwing it out there. I would, maybe Rosetta, what's the, oh, we do have a question in the room. I'll, I'll pose my question after. Do you, would you like to unmute, unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, Peter. Um, my question is, so a friend of mine is, is, is attempting to put together a nonprofit. And, and so while he's familiar with grant writing, um, I'm curious for somebody that is a certified grant writer, do they collect uh, a fee? Do they collect a percentage? Um, it was re recommended to us that we, that we seek a grant writer. And I just don't know a whole lot about that, i.e. my presence today. <laughs> Sure, that's a really good question and it's essential. If you are going to pay somebody to write a grant for you, in my personal opinion, it's based on a percentage. Some people will come back and they'll say, well, it's kind of dollar amount based. It's like, okay, if it's $25,000, I want 5%. Some organizations and some people, individuals, they will say, okay, we can write a grant for 25,000, but
but I won't take anything unless you get it. So, you know, that that's um, kind of like those conversations you have with that individual or organization that you're going to spend money on to get money. And, and really that's what it kind of boils down to sometimes is you do need to invest money to get money because that investment is going to be built in to your grant. You know, somehow you, you, you would label it as administrative fees or something of that nature to offset that cost. But that's a good question. Um, in, in just my um, own personal experience is I charge a percent based on the amount of the grant. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rosetta. I also wonder what in, you know, all the times that you've either reviewed grants or written grants, what is the, what has been the most challenging aspect to writing a grant or, or another way to frame it is when you are reviewing grants, the times that you have, like, what do people miss? when they're writing the grant, like what information you're like, Oh, I wish they would have added this or, you know, what are those things that you, you think people sometimes don't think about when they're writing grants? What I look at is when I'm first pulling up a, a grant to review in a portal, what people fail to look at from an outsider's point of view is I don't know who you are, you know, all I see is a name on a paper, and then you go off on this five page spiel, but I still don't know who you are, who your organization is, what do you do, what have you done? And so for example, like Racing Magpie, you know, you would start off with Racing My Pay, Mag, Magpie has been in existence for X, Y, Z years, we are a backbone of our community. We provide funding and support to our community via ABCD. So that, in essence, kind of spells out, it's like, oh, good, great. So then your next paragraph or the next three pages is going to tell me, you're going to tell me what you need funding for, what your vision is, what, what you want to do into you know, enhance your community, um, continue programming that already exists within your community and that it would better the community. So what I have found and the people that I work with with the grants is we're community-based and community-based is basically saying, we will fund you if you serve our community. Boys and Girls Club, you know, um, Phoenix Valley of the Sun, you know, YMCAs, because they serve the community. They provide a service to the community. And so homeless shelters, you know, if you're doing uh, food service, if you are, the, the coolest one I, uh, that I helped fund was that um, a organization created themselves to go to the convention centers and pick up the leftover food from banquets. And then they would take that banquet food and then they would divvy it out to the homeless people, homeless encampments. You know, so they were utilizing their resources because they had a full fledged kitchen, but they weren't cooking any of the food. They were just, just, you know, picking up the food from banquets that happened in downtown in the Phoenix Convention Centers at State Farm Stadium, at the Phoenix Suns. They would do that, pick it up. And then they would have their cash of organizations that feed the, the homeless or feed the children, women and children's shelters. So I thought, God, you know, what what a needed and necessary thing that, they, that they're doing. So of course we're gonna give you money because you're helping your community. Um, the, um, when I did review for the National Endowments of the Arts and I was there and I, you know, I came in with my rose colored glasses on and I was advocating 
for the little person. I was advocating for the people that were only asking for $50,000, you know, because you we had these large organizations that were, you know, being funded in the millions. And so my, what I was trying to do was like, you know, how about this organization that's been in existence for six years, but the, you know, they're, they're trying to do what they could do with what they got. So let, let's help them out a little bit more. So that, that's, that was my purpose. And, you know, I, I, some of them really tore at your heartstrings and their story, but the bottom line is it's about storytelling because when you're telling a story, you're telling about your organization, you're telling me, you know, the reviewer, what you're doing in the community. And so that's how you write is you write from your heart, you you write specifics, you you write in a manner that I get to know you. So by the end of reading that 50 pages or whatnot of all that, that big package of uh, grant paperwork is I'm going to know you intimately. I'm going to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what the end result is. Because that's really what you look at, what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what's the end result. So does, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's really helpful. And I think um, I just, I know there are some folks that that can be a very uncomfortable place, right? Where, especially in our native communities, when um, we're taught not to talk about ourselves in that way, right? So it's also the compelling, trying to have a compelling story that also we feel comfortable and confident about as well. Yes, yes. And, you know, to, um, you know, I'll be honest, I wrote some grants for myself back in the day, you know, pre-COVID, because what I do, um, I'm retired, but what I do is public speaking. You know, I partner with different organizations here in uh, Phoenix, and I tell my story, you know, I go and public speak to court, to the courts. Well, when the pandemic hit, all my speaking engagements got canceled, which was really my bread and butter. You know, that, that was my source of income. So I reached out to organizations and, you know, found them all through like Facebook or Instagram or whatnot. And they were saying, you know, if you've been affected, if you, you know, your stream of income has been halted due to the pandemic or whatnot, you know, we're helping artists, we're helping people with that, get through that. And so I submitted grants for me and I got them all. So that helped me get through that period of time, probably like three years worth of time to until I got back on my feet and the organization started contacting me again to, to go back and, and speak. And so, you know, when I speak, I tell my story and it, like I said, it's a personal story. So what I want to hear is who are you? What is your organization doing and how are you affecting the community? So. I really, I appreciate that and I think right it is it can be very um nerve wracking but I'm I'm glad we're having this conversation today. Mm -hmm. If just a reminder, if you're just joining us on Facebook Live, if you have questions for Rosetta, you can drop a comment or question into the comment section on the Facebook Live, and we'll we can relay those to Rosetta. Um, do we have any more questions in the Zoom room? It was just Bruce and Peter in here, but <laughs> I'm glad you all are joining us. Um, yeah, what know. Oh, do you have any more questions? I, if you do go online and just want to start um, Googling, you can Google grant writing. You can do grant review. And what I would look at and what I have found extremely helpful for myself in this path is I started out as a grant reviewer. And what that allows you then is the opportunity to read, to read through the 
50 pages, 150 pages worth of grants that are being submitted to see how they're disseminating their information to give you a, a foundation on how to put those words together. You know, it, like I said, it's all about storytelling. And if you are looking at paying somebody to tell your story, you need to sit down with that storyteller and make sure that they know who you are. So I, I, I recommend if you want to pay somebody, go ahead and do it. Um, but do review, do some review first, look at some grants that have already been submitted either to an organization or on, on that same vein that you're trying to get a, a grant on, you know, I, I don't know, Bruce, what your organization is doing or, or where you're at with that. So you just need to look at telling your story and who is telling your story. And, but that storytelling, you know, we're as indigenous people, we're, we're a very storytelling heavy group here, but those words need to be on the page. You know, you have to put the, the words on the page in a constructive manner that it's still going to be a delightful story. So at the end of the 50 pages, I know who you are. That's great. I think, um, yeah, at the end of the 50 pages, we should have a very clear like idea of the organization or the individual or or the practice, right? Depending on what the grant is going to be used for. Yep. And you know, the, the large group, the NEA grants, oh, there were so many beautiful things happening across our nation here in the arts, you know, arts, music, spoken word, murals. And that's really where I, um, I tend to stay down that, that lane. That's my path is arts, community, spoken word, poetry, you know, writing books, authors, but it's all in the arts field. You know, there are other fields that you can concentrate on too. So, you know, there's sports, people get grant funding for sports because you have Nike, Adidas, and all these other sport groups that fund athletes, you know, from your high school athletes, your wrestlers, your track people. So my thing was, uh, was the arts. So, but I know that it's just it's such a wide variety. You could just take that and literally run with it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what are, what you, so you said, right, like you could just go and Google, um, to look for grants, but where, maybe highlight some places that people can like look for grants or um, just like organizations that you know have funded uh, Native folks? Okay, um, sure. What, um, you know, being here and embedded in Phoenix, you know, my home, I've lived here since 1995 from a, with my family, is I've always been a part of the Native American arts community. And over the past several years, we have, we being, you know, my family, I voluntold them, they come help me as well, is we do help out with planning of Native American art markets. And when I say Native American art markets, we provide space and a place for artists to come sell their product. So in getting a Native American art market together, you need a place, which we do have um, collaborations with various organizations. One of them is the Sitavaki Museum, formerly Pueblo Grande Museum in Phoenix. I've helped with their um, Native American art market Indian festival for about 25 years. Uh, the other one is the Herd Museum Indian Fair and Market. And they're a very well established uh, uh, Indian Fair and Market, and they just hosted their 60th anniversary, and I've helped them for probably about 20 years as well. And so helping out with um, planning committees is basically groundwork. 
it's grunt work. It's, you know, going to the city of Tempe or going to the city of Phoenix and getting the permits to host a festival. It's getting the sign permits to post a banner. It's getting everything, you know, getting your volunteers together, getting funding to put this thing on to begin with. And so that's where I come in and help out in writing grants to get funding to put on the art markets. So that's kind of where I help out. So that's also evolved into other organizations reaching out and asking me, can you help us? Can can you come on to our planning committee and, and help us? So that's where we got involved then with the Arizona Indian Festival, which is held in Scottsdale, which is in collaboration with the city of Scottsdale, Parada del Sol. So, you know, all these organizations start shaking hands with each other. So you, we have different organizations that help out at all the different events. And so we're kind of like collaborating with a lot of different um, artists and art markets throughout the, the, the valley here. Um, I, I love I love doing stuff like this because I get to be there from, you know, the first planning meeting in May to the end of market in December. And it's just a joy and a privilege to be in the presence of these artists that that are putting their life's work on display for everybody to see. And that's where the joy and the love and the pleasure with working with people in the arts comes from because they're literally putting their their heart and soul on a piece of pottery or in a woven rug or in their jewelry. You know, the, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And I will support them to my last dying breath. <laughs> I appreciate that. I think it's, yeah. I think it's exciting when we could, we have organizations that we, A, trust, right, as Native people, but also that we can celebrate all the, the hard work that they do. Um, so as far as um, uh, Native organizations that support Native Action Network, um, they're really good. They're really good. They're based on the um, East or in the West Coast. So a lot of their organizations that they fund are going to be in California, but they do fund other people from around the country as well. And they're very, very strong in support of women, indigenous women, native women, and they um, will help you come and be a part of their cohort to uplift and elevate your work that you're doing in your community. So it's recognizing women too, it's recognizing organizations that do the work, boots on the ground. And the other um, was, what is it? The generation seven gen, I think seventh gen fund. And then there's, um, I haven't been a recipient, but I know other people that have been recipient of um, the Nike seven that's been um, really helpful in the sports world with the youth in sports and basketball and football camps and things like that. So those are very far reaching organizations that really help you know, because I'm talking with kids that are six years old that get to meet and greet with um, pretty much famous sports personalities, but will um, mentor them that are there and helping put on football camps, baseball camps, you know, soccer camps that put these children, our young children that are our now generation put them in a light where they know that they're loved and that they're being cared for and that we are helping them. It's like, you know, if you take an interest in football, this is where it can lead you. If you're thinking about doing soccer, this is where it can lead you. But I love that, you know, th that sports avenue, it's paramount and it, it's healthy. It gets our kids engaged because it's a family thing. You know, you have one son that's doing football, you have another son that's doing soccer. You know, it's a makes for a very strong family unit in, in my eyes. 
you know, my daughter grew up in soccer. She was doing soccer, had done soccer since she was about four years old. So I, I saw that. So I, I, that's good. Um, as far as other organizations, um, working with large corporations, you know, like I said, in the insurance industry, you have you know, State Farm Insurance, you have Geico, you've got all your banking institutions, they all fund, they all have funds that are just there. And when I say they're just there is, yes, you have to do the work, you have to write the papers, you have to tell your story, but the funding is there. And there's also um, other nonprofits that fund, you know, you, you will have your Boys and Girls Club that will fund a student athlete. You know, you will have other nonprofits that will buy books for the third grade elementary school that's a native author. You, you know, it, it's just it's just a really big, beautiful cycle of funding <laughs> that's out there. And I say that from my perspective is that I belong to um, I'm I'm taking classes at Arizona State University with Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College. And we are in a program called the Collaborative Leading in Indigenous Communities. So with that program, we got a funding, we have a budget to do with whatever it is, a program that we wanna make up. So I'm making up buying books. <laughs> so we're gonna buy books and then that buying books kind of went down the vein of, well, how about backpacks? It's like, yeah, let's get backpacks. So I reached out to my network and I collaborated and I got 1500 backpacks. Well now, okay, well, what are we gonna put in those backpacks? <laughs> well, how about some notebooks and some pencils <laughs> and some erasers and reached out to another person in my network and sure, 1500, are you sure you don't need 3000? <laughs> Okay, no, I got to keep it manageable, but it's planting seeds. I think we talked about that. When you start to plant your seeds, you will reap the benefits. So this whole network that I have cultivated over the last 25 years here in the greater Phoenix area, they all step up because when they see the work you do in the community, they don't hesitate to help. They say, oh, Sure, you, you need books. Hey, we got an author here. We you know, we got a native author. She's doing a book release. How many books do you need? And it's as, sometimes it's as simple as that, but you have to ask. You, you have to ask. You have to not be afraid to make your need known. Thank you. I think that's actually... Um... Kind of, you know, we're coming up on the hour, but I think that's a, a wonderful place to kind of end, right? I think thinking about asking for help and uh and 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 asking, right, to to find support. And so in closing, where like how can people find you or um can they follow you on social media? What are some some places that we can engage with with all the cool stuff that you're doing? Oh, yes, I am on social media, probably more than I need to be, but I am on um, Facebook, Rosetta Walker. I'm on Instagram, Rosetta Walker. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I, I Unfortunately, I do it all. But And the reason why I do that all is because we were just um, pointing out that sharing information is caring. Share, share, share information. I share artist pages because they're near and dear to me. So a lot of my Facebook friends, I think I have close to 3000, are all artists because we collaborate with each other and I share upcoming markets that are happening. It's like, make sure you get your application in on time. And I used to work at um, Arizona State University. So I have a lot of native students that I still collaborate with. And so I share other scholarship opportunities on my Facebook page and Instagram, because nobody benefits if you hoard information. Nobody. It's just for your eyes only, and that's not going to go anywhere, no way, no how. So just, I, I share it, all of it. <laughs> so. 
Awesome. I really appreciate that. And then it looks like we have one question in the Zoom room. Uh, yes, good afternoon again. Um, so so I love that you went in that direction because oftentimes you run into those gatekeepers. And, and so at that point, um, your experience, do you just go in a different direction or or do you continue to go down that path and try and get, get past that gatekeeper? Because oftentimes, yeah, we're, we're running into that people that just don't want to share information. And then, then prior to that, my question was also, um, I, I, I don't know if I missed it. I think... Um, uh, Clementine asked, you know, how to read other people's grants. Are you tapping individuals who you know that? Is there some place you can go? Is that public record? I, I'm just kind of curious about that as well. Well, if what I I believe, what I'm alluding to is it's considered volunteer work, but if you could tap into a network that they need grant reviewers, they need fresh eyes. They need people with a perspective that can read through documents to determine if that grant is eligible for funding. And so that really gets your feet wet on how to tell your story. So after you've read like 50 grants, then you see the progression of the, the storytelling and, and you see how, okay, they have their all their paperwork, done they have the, all their t's crossed and their i's dotted but in the end of the day did they tell me a good story because did they tell me how they were going to spend that fifty thousand dollars that they're requesting and you know what i did is i connected with um, i live in the city of tempe in arizona so i connected with the city of tempe grant review panel and i joined them it's a volunteer nonprofit work. And what I do is I read grants and I'm a grant reviewer. And I've been doing that for about five years. So there are organizations out there that could use your help. And so that's kind of where you can really tap into a network there too, because those people that are sitting on that grant review panel also have networks. And I really encourage people to network and learn how to network was actually is a whole nother conversation. Thank you. That'll, that'll be our net. Thank you, Bruce, for that question. And uh, yeah, networking will, <laughs> will be our next, next year's winter camp. Uh, but I, I just, I really appreciate you sharing your wealth of knowledge and experience with us, Rosetta and um, and and taking time out of, I know you're retired, but I feel like you are a very busy person. So thank you for taking time out of your very um, busy schedule and, and sharing with us this evening. And um, if you have any closing thoughts, I'll turn it over to you before we end, end the live. Well, you know, I think our life's purpose here are daily walk that we do with life is filled with opportunity if we just took advantage of it and it's opening up our hearts and opening up our minds to be a part of our our better good for for mankind here and if that means that i review grants then that's what it'll be and if it means that i sit on indian market committees then so be it but I try to participate and I encourage everybody to participate in your community, however it may be. You may do one event a year, you may do 10 events a year, but get out there and be a part of your community because you're shaping and molding what your community looks like and, and that's by your participation. Awesome, thank you so much, Rosetta. Thank you for those that joined us in the Zoom room and, and watched on Facebook Live, you will be able to find this video posted to uh, both Facebook and the Racing Magpie's YouTube channel. So thank you all and have a good evening.